I interviewed someone who said that his family got sick. They went to a funeral um, in mid-March. And they said mainly because the president wasn't taking it seriously. He said, if, I, if the president had had a mask on, if he was saying we should stay home, then I would have stayed home well, instead. I, know, I have I, family I members. I'm just, I'm gonna, the, 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 he said his family members were sick and because they were but they were listening to you. Do you feel like, or are you concerned that downplaying the virus maybe yeah. got some people sick? And a lot of people love Trump, right? A lot of people love him. You see him all the time, right? I guess I'm here for a reason, you know? To the best of my knowledge, I won. And I think we're going to win again. I think we're going to win in a landslide. But just so you understand, you're talking about March, right? Yeah. And yet, excuse me, excuse me. I know. I understand. And yet in January, a certain date, you know the date better than I do, we put on a ban of China where China can't come in. And before March, we put on a ban on Europe where Europe can't come in. So how could you say I wasn't taking it seriously? Do you know, I put on a ban on China before anybody in this country died. R remember this. So at the end of January, I put on a ban. People that were in that room will tell you that I think there were 21 people. I was the only one in the whole room that wanted to do it. Fortunately, I was the one that counted for that purpose. We put on a ban because I was reading bad things about China. World Health Organization should have told us. But I was reading it with or without them. They should have known. All they had to do was read it. They didn't have to even be there. But they tried to cover up for China. World Health covered up for China. But no, no, wait. But you can't say this. Look, I put on a ban. In other words, I stopped China from coming to the United States. I stopped Europe from coming into the United States long before the March date that you're talking about. So people should say I acted very early. That was a very hard thing to do. Doing that was a very hard thing. I didn't want to do that, but I, I did it because I thought, and Dr. Fauci said that by doing it, President Trump saved tens of thousands of lives. So I did take it very seriously. You held rallies in February and in March, and there are some Americans Oh, I don't know. I don't know about rallies. I really don't know about rallies. I know one thing. I haven't left the White House in months, except for a brief moment to give a wonderful ship the comfort. You held a rally in March. I, I don't know. Did I hold a rally? I'm sorry, I hold a rally. Did I hold a rally? Let me tell you, in January, when I did this, you had virtually no cases and no deaths, and yet I put it on. So how could I not? Why was Nancy Pelosi, right? Nancy Pelosi is holding a street fair. She wants a street fair in San Francisco in Chinatown to prove, you know what the purpose of it was, to prove that there's no problem. Many other politicians did the same thing and wanted to prove. Yeah. While I was, no, of course not. No, no, no. I, I've been, people are amazed at how early I acted. And I did act early. With that being said, it's very hard to say, let's close down the greatest economy in the history of the world. So to be clear, Trump's response to the fact that Americans who were following his lead by not taking the virus seriously, not wearing masks, not staying at home, and subsequently got sick is that, and I quote, a lot of people love Trump. A lot of people love me. You see them all the time, right? I guess I'm here for a reason, you know? To the best of my knowledge, I won, and I think we're gonna win again. I think we're gonna win in a landslide. That was his response to people who got sick by following his lead. Now he goes on to tout what else but his half-baked travel restrictions to China, but not before PBS's Yamiche Alcindor called him out for being so committed to taking the virus seriously that the guy literally held campaign rallies after the outbreak. And not just one, he held six on February 10th, 19th, 20th, 21st, 28th, and March 2nd. And not only that, Further underscoring just how seriously Trump was taking the outbreak, which the CDC, HHS, and NSC all knew about on January 3rd, Trump was on the golf course on January 4th, and January 5th, and January 18th, and 19th, and February 1st, and 2nd, and 15th, and March 7th, and March 8th. That's how seriously Trump took it. Something to think about the next time Trump tries to use the fact that he was being impeached as an excuse for why he didn't take action sooner. Because he apparently wasn't too distracted to make it to the golf course on nine separate occasions or perform at campaign rallies on six separate occasions. And of course, once he was finished complimenting himself, Trump proceeded to wheel off a list of excuses. He said that the World Health Organization should have told him, only 
They did. The WHO declared a global health emergency on January 30th, which was before Trump even initiated his travel ban. He says that he took the vastly difficult and brilliant and unprecedented step of stopping travel to China. Only A, he didn't stop all travel to China. He placed restrictions on foreign nationals who'd been in China the last 14 days, which still allowed a staggering 40,000 people to enter the United States from China. And B, that step clearly wasn't successful. You don't get to point to having taken one sole step of imposing some half-baked travel ban in a country that then proceeded to experience the worst outbreak on the face of the earth and declare mission accomplished. So he can pat himself on the back all he wants, but he doesn't have anything to show for it. There was one thing in particular that was notable. Trump said that he imposed the travel restrictions before there was even one death, expecting praise for having done so. But here's the thing, that's his job. His job is to take steps and to take them quickly to avoid any deaths. And you don't have to be some visionary to be willing to take that step. In New Zealand, Prime Minister Ardern imposed steps so strict that even isolated activities like hunting and swimming were banned, along with widespread national testing. Now, while Trump doesn't have the authority to impose a nationwide shutdown in the US, at the very least, he could have acted like a leader and advocated for one. And most important, New Zealand's right-wing party not only didn't spread this information about the virus or whip its supporters into a frenzy by goading them into protests, they supported the decision. And the result? They only lost 13 people. In other words, Trump wants a trophy because he took one single step before any Americans died, whereas other world leaders took every step, followed the science completely, and moved quickly, and have actual success to show for it. That's the difference between being an actual leader and just playing one on TV.